Office of the Prime Minister, yours truly, Andrew Holness, and I will be supported there by the Honorable Robert Nesta Morgan, MP, Minister without portfolio, but he will continue to handle the information portfolio and other such areas as I may assign to him from time to time. I'm very pleased to welcome Senator, Dr. the Honorable Dana Morris Dixon. Of course, I'm giving you the title before you're sworn in, but when you're sworn in, the title will become official. Uh, it is my great pleasure to welcome you to the cabinet as minister without portfolio. And um, Dana will be responsible for skills and digital transformation. Homer Davis, MP, will continue in the office of the Prime Minister as Minister of State, and he will take up responsibility for some of the, the other areas in OPM. Uh, those will be published, but particularly for the social partnership, because the social partnership is such an important arm of our uh, democratic structure. <clears throat> now, the Ministry of Economic Growth and Job Creation, I will remain the minister there. Uh, the Honorable Everard Warmington will continue to be the minister without portfolio, managing the works portfolio. And Senator, the Honorable Matthew Samuda will continue to do the excellent job he's doing in managing the climate change, environment, water, and uh, other areas for which I have given him responsibility. The Minister of National Security, Deputy Prime Minister, the Honorable Dr. Horace Chang will remain as minister. Uh, there is uh, much talk about the Ministry of National Security. Uh, minister knows that we have had our heart-to-heart -heart talk about the ministry. It is a tough and thankless job. Um, it, is, it is not a ministry that any other minister wants to go. I'm going to attach to Minister Chang, a new Minister of State, the Honorable Juliet Cuthbert Flynn. And she will be the Minister of State in that ministry. And there is a strategy change that will become apparent. I have a new ministry, the Ministry of Agriculture, Fisheries, and Mining. And I'm appointing the Honorable Floyd Green MP as minister in that ministry. Uh, agriculture has such great potential and uh, mining fits neatly with it as well. The Honorable Franklin Witter will continue to be minister of state in that ministry. Um, the Ministry of Culture, Gender, Entertainment and Sports, otherwise the Ministry of Minister Grange. Babs's ministry. So we we'll leave it at that. The Ministry of Education, again, another ministry that, you know, I've noted very carefully the, the observations and suggestions and criticisms. We have in train a program which I do not want to disrupt. Uh, Minister Favol Williams has been integral in establishing the transformation program. And Minister Williams will therefore remain as the Minister of Education and Youth. She will be joined by the Honorable Marsha Smith, MP. And uh, the focus of that will be to look at child services in that ministry uh, that needs significant um, attention. In terms of the Ministry of Finance, um, Dr. Nigel Clark will remain the Minister of Finance and he will be joined by the Honorable Xavier Main as Minister of State in the Ministry of Finance. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Senator the Honorable Kamina Johnson-Smith and, uh, uh, you know, Minister Johnson-Smith has just stamped that ministry. But there are also some 
critical matters that are ongoing in that ministry. Uh, the Honorable Alanda Terrilong MP will be Minister of State in that ministry, uh, special focus on diaspora affairs and whatever else Minister John Smith may want to assign him. The Ministry of Health, again, uh, Dr. The Honorable Christopher Tufton has stamped his name on that ministry. Again, in our discussions, you know, Minister Tufton has done so well nationally. And in my discussions with him, he pointed out that the best is yet to come. Uh, in the Ministry of Industry, Investment and Commerce, Senator Aubin Hill will remain. In the, Minister of, in the Ministry of Justice, the Honorable Delroy Chuck will remain. Now, the Ministry of Legal and Constitutional Affairs. Now, when Minister Fort got this ministry, uh, I'm certain that she did not realize the, the level of work that constitutional reform would require. Uh, and so Minister Malahu Fort has been entrusted with carrying through this very important national agenda item. And so she will continue in the ministry, but with a, a sole focus almost on ensuring that we achieve the constitutional reform agenda. Uh, the Ministry of Local Government and Community Development, the Honorable uh, Desmond Mayor Mackenzie will continue as minister. We have a new ministry, the Ministry of Science, Energy, Telecommunications, and Transport. And this fits neatly together. And the Honorable Daryl Vaz MP will um, remain as minister there. And uh, the Honorable J.C. Hutchinson will give support as Minister of State. But it is a salesman's ministry, and you have to be in the field talking to the agents, meeting the investors, uh, in addition to managing tourism on the ground in Jamaica. And Minister Bartlett has done a fantastic job, and he remains as Minister of Tourism. In the Ministry of Labor and Social Security, I've asked the Honorable Pernell Charles Jr. to take over that ministry. Uh, labor and Social Security will require significant transformations. So one of the other transformations that I did mention in the earlier part of my presentation, which we will have to undertake, is a transformation of the PATH program. And you will be supported by the Honorable Norman Dunn, MP, Minister of State. So we have, we have in hearing the call of the people for accountability, for stability, for good management, we have carved down the government, we have taken off one ministry, uh, and we have kept the government basically very tight, and we have brought in new talent into the government. Uh, 